everyone, and welcome to our second Radical Kitchen. My name is Amel, and I'm the projects curator here at the Serpentine. And I'm really, really excited to um, welcome you all here to our picnic, um, co-hosted by the amazing women from Mazimas, who have cooked this incredible picnic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Roberta is going to uh, talk a little bit more about what Mazimas does um, and uh, the chefs are here to talk about the food and if um, any of you haven't had a chance to try the picnic you can buy um, items by Mazimas at the cafe and all proceeds go to Mazimas. Um, today we are joined uh, by Women for Refugee Women and I'm so excited to welcome you guys here so let's all welcome them. Um, so the Radical Kitchen series, uh, just before we start, is a program where we wanted to eat together and talk about what it means to hold space, um, uh, develop grassroots movements, um, create projects together here in London around issues, collecting people together. And we're really honoring groups like Women for Refugee Women and enterprises like Mazi Mas that really do that. So today's all about hearing from them and learning together. And we're going to talk together at the end uh, a little bit and ask questions of what it means to care in a city like London. So here's Roberta. Hello. So just a brief introduce for who doesn't know, uh, Mazimas is a, a catering company and pop-up restaurant who only employ women from migrant and refugee backgrounds because we want these women to show their talents, incredible cookery, and cuisine skills, and they don't have jobs. So we want to give them the opportunity to become professions in the food industry. And we have two wonderful examples here of future, maybe even TV series chefs, <laughs> next stars of the TV s world. So we have Paula from Costa Rica and Luz from Ecuador. And they are the ones who cook this wonderful food you had now. <laughs> and they can speak in their own words what, what they cook today. And you can know a little bit of what we do. Oh, hello. Thank you for coming. My name is Paola. I am from Costa Rica. I made today two uh, sauce, special sauce. Um, have my personal ingredients. <laughs> um, the sauce, the red sauce, have 12 different ingredients inside. Uh, that's, yes, the special, uh, maybe for two liters, I wait for, I cook for four hours, five hours. Um, and the green sauce is special, very special, because I use it for everything. Uh, <laughs> yes, for me, the, 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 the um, egg, the chicken, the everything. Um, and today I make for you. <laughs> Hi, hello. Welcome to for coming. I am from Ecuador. I made today tortilla. Spanish tortillas. I was born in Spain. is my favorite dish. Thank you. And she can make six tortillas in 10 minutes. And we look and we say one day uh, it's important. She's the, really the queen of tortilla. Spain lost the queen of tortilla. We have the queen of Spain, the king of Spain today, but we have the queen of tortilla. Much better. <laughs> <laughs> so now... I'll pass on to another wonderful organization who is here, invited to meet us. And thank you for coming and hope you enjoyed the food. I'm sure you have some wonderful food yourselves as well. So we can know more about their project as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is this working? Oh, yeah, brilliant. Um, I'm Natasha Walter. I'm from Women for Refugee Women. And first of all, I just really want to say thank you so much to the Serpentine Gallery for inviting us here today. Um, I've lived in London all my life. I think it's an amazing city, so full of wonderful spaces. What really strikes me so often, working with um, women who've sought asylum in London, is what a different city they often experience and how they often don't come into the beautiful spaces, including the free spaces that we often take for granted. So it's wonderful to be here today with women that we work with who've come to this country seeking asylum. So Women for Refugee Women works on um, three different levels. We work, we campaign for a fair asylum process, and we work to reach as wide audiences as possible through media, through events, through research, and so on. 
But the absolutely most important part of our work, what all our work is founded on, is working with empowering and enabling women themselves who've come to this country seeking asylum, enabling their voices to be heard and enabling them to build the confidence to speak out and to go forward as they rebuild their lives. So what we wanted to do today to really share that with you is to bring with us some of the amazing women that we work with in our drama group. The drama group's actually hosted in another wonderful London space at the moment in the Royal Festival Hall, but they're here with us today. And I'd just like to pass over to my colleague, Rebecca Lawton, who, who leads the drama group and who's going to introduce what they're going to be sharing with us today. Thanks so much. Hello, yes, I'm Rebecca and I have the great pleasure and honor really of supporting the women in their creative writing work and their performance work. Um, I'm going to talk as little as possible because you don't want to hear my voice, you want to hear their voices. So we have about, about 27 poems that we've written over the last year. We're just going to show you or um, perform for you four of those poems today. So um, the first poem, Elizabeth and Abby, if you'd like to join me here. Wonderful. <laughs> this poem was written on a retreat that the group went on about a month ago. It was um, one of the evenings we were together was the evening before the general election. And it was a time of great uncertainty. And um, the group of women, we shared some really special evenings together. And on the evening before the election, we sat and as a group, we wrote this poem to try and explore how we felt and how the women felt about the evening. So I'll pass you over. Thank you. Tomorrow, a poem written on the eve of the general election, the 8th of June, 2017. Tomorrow, my future is that I'm homeless. No food, no home. I'm a refugee woman seeking protection, wandering every day, stress and depression, loss of memory, living as a beggar, wandering every day. What is my future? Will tomorrow ever come? As night falls, my heart bangs on my chest wall for fear of the unknown. Is it a crime to be a refugee woman? In my sojourn in this land of the unknown with no way forward. Is it a crime to be a refugee woman? Everywhere I turn for help, there is a brick wall. Will tomorrow ever come? The wind is blowing from the north. The wind is coming from the south. The wind is blowing from the east. The wind is coming from the west. The wind of uncertainty is blowing. Everyone is running elter and scatter. Life turned upside down. Where, where, where? Will my help come from? Can every hope be gone? Can all hope be gone? Depression, domestic violence, rape, persecution are the order of my days. My days as a refugee wom uh, woman, fear of the unknown overwhelms my days. Can every hope be gone? Can all hope be gone? Justice, fairness, rescue me from this flood of life. How do I fit in as a non-European, as non-British, as an asylum seeker caught in this political predicament? Future leaders, I wonder if you think of me in your manifesto plans, do your plans of this country allow me to pursue my chosen life here? How will I treat 
How will you treat all refugees, the European, the Africans, the Asians? And how do I fit in as a non-European, as non-British, as an asylum seeker caught in this political predicament? Every continent has its time. And I am proud of my country and my color. Refugees need a home and a safe space to live in. We need to work to contribute. I am proud. I will ask questions and people will give me answers. I was strong and active and now I'm a beggar. Where is my future? Where, Where is my future? future? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now freedom. So could the performers for freedom join me, please? So Jade and Jade? is praying to God without persecution. Freedom is you live where you want to live. Freedom is have children of your own choice. Freedom is walking naked without anyone ogling at you. Freedom is, is have children of your own choice. Freedom is love children and teach them to love people of all colors because we are one. Freedom is brass whispering, sweet melody. Freedom is putting your feet up after a hard day's work. Freedom is all we need. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, freedom is unlimited space. Freedom smells like flowers, pink roses. Freedom feels like a precious stone. Freedom is bright light, a natural bright light, like the moon. Freedom tasted like baklava. <laughs> freedom is peace of mind. Thank you. Olivia. 
Thank you, Olivia. That's brilliant. Okay, um, this next poem, the woman who wrote the poem isn't able to be with us today, but um, Debbie's going to read the poem on her behalf. Um, it was written uh, when our colleagues saw the inflatable dinghies in the Mediterranean, and I think we've all seen those images. And um, so our colleague wrote a poem from the point of view of the boat. So, um, Debbie, if you'd like to read that for us. I am just a dinghy, fed by the hair of desperate heart and big dream. Hearts whispering pain and trauma. Hearts that have witnessed the death of broken soul. Tiny bodies resting on my belly, legs dangling over my side. Can I reassure you whether we shall make it? To the safe shore, hearts are shaken. Ooh, will welcome you and who will be there for you thank you and for a final poem this is um, everyone involved in set her free if you could join us up here now so brilliant nope. Nope, no don't worry <laughs> yep I came from a place of succulent mangoes and dirt tree, sunny mountains, grass, whispering, simple melody. Home, where nature is forever green. I came from DRC, where kidnapping happens daily, dead on the floor daily. Every minute, every second, there is suffering. Home where human bodies are stuck onto the floor lifelessly, like animals for butchery. Home where freedom is stolen and families are broken and there is no hope. And home is where the heart is, but soldiers beat you heartlessly, then strip you of your dignity treat you like a worthless being, constantly seeing rape and torture. I remember thinking I was better off with wild animals and poisonous snakes. Home is where my family is. Home is where my children rest. Home is where my past lay, where I used to play. Where my future is best, home is a beautiful place, but my city has no safety. I came here to seek asylum. I was been asking why I want asylum. I suffered, raped, trauma, torture. I don't remember names, dates, evidence. I am disbelieved detained, deported. I came here to seek asylum. I remember traveling on the night bus to the home office, having to join the queue at 5 a.m., hoping they would give me my right direction. I'll never forget the treatment got from three security men, men without mercy. And when I finally told my story, I had to repeat myself over and over, over and over, again and again. They did not believe my innocence. Mr. Officer, am I a victim or a suspect? My only crime was to seek asylum. I remember the day I received the letter from the Home Office. I read the words, but I could not understand. I read the words but I could not understand. Then my mind went blank. Rejection, rejection, rejection. It was one week before Christmas. I remember asking myself what is happening. No one told me anything. 
I remember feeling scared and uncertain. The tension is like a wall closing in. The tension is a prison without time limit. The tension is a prison without crime. The tension is you are guilty without sentence. I remember my roommate shouting and screaming, help, help, help me. At that moment, I remember asking myself what could be my chance of escaping. I remember the day they took me to detention. I was in my bed crying for my family. I remember eating uncooked food daily and no one believed me when I was sick. I remember thinking, this is it. I remember the detention building. For all the pain and hurt, set us free. For all the trauma and depression, set us free. For all the suffering, sadness, and sleeplessness, set us free. Set us free. Set us free. Thank you so, so much. They're such inspiring women. I mean, working with these women every day, people often say, oh, you work with refugee women, that must be hard, difficult. But as you can see, they are such an inspiration to us and their courage, despite everything they've been through, is what really, what really keeps us going, and carries us forward. I know we haven't got that much more time, have we, in this space, but what I'd so actually, I would like to um, ask my colleague Marchu, Marchu Girma, who's the grassroots coordinator, just to say a bit to you guys about how this work that we do, this, this drama work, developing women's creativity and confidence in speaking out, fits into our work as a whole. And then we'd love to hear from you if you've got any questions about the work we do at Women for Refugee Women. That would be great. Marchu. Thank you. Um, I think why we started doing drama was we wanted to build solidarity amongst the women themselves. So it's about for them a space to come and share their stories in a safe environment. Um, and then from there, then we can build um, transformative ways of them sharing their stories to the world out there um, through poetry and in that way, they don't need to feel the pain so much because there is a distance. So like the Set Have Free poem, we wrote it with about 12 women initially, all sharing their stories of their journey to, um, through the asylum process. But to, through the poem, anyone can read it or any of the women can perform it. Um, it's their story, but it's also our story together. Um, so it creates that distance and um, then they will feel more empowered to be able to, to stand here and um, say, set her free or set us free. Um, and so why this work is important is this is the foundation to change because it's the women who have to come together, feel empowered enough to tell the world what is happening to them. And through that process, then change can happen because then there is raising awareness. So you all heard the stories, you all heard the poems today. So it's about you know a bit more now what asylum seeking women are going through. So it's about what are you then going to do about it? And our uh, other aspect of the work that we do is lobbying the government uh, for change because um, it's, you know, it's not just about hearing the stories, but there needs to be some action attached to it. So we usually ask people to write to their MPs uh, about issues affecting refugee and uh, asylum-seeking women. Um, but the, again, the foundation is the asylum-seeking women who come to the groups and um, talk about their stories. Um, can I just invite 
a few of them to talk about why they come. So maybe I will invite Rahima to come up here with me and just say a few words about um, Rahima has been coming to the group for over three years. <laughs> um, so yeah, do you want to say a few words about why you keep coming? Yes. Uh, thank you very much. As we all know, East West home is the best. But when I came here, I lost home. And I, fo I found out about uh, Women for Refugee Women, started by uh, the wonderful lady here and the coordinator here, which gave, us, which gave me back home. So when I come to Women for Refugee Women, this is my East West. This is where home is. And this is where I, have, I find family. Because I don't have family here, but the people I meet here are my family. And though she's younger than me, she's my mother. <laughs> I lost my mother, yes, because she, she does a lot for us. She feeds us. When we go there, we are hungry. She feeds us, transports us if we can't come, and also helps us in many ways. Maybe the other members can also w be witness of that. Thank you very much for giving us. Thank you. Thank you. Can I invite Joy then to come and talk about why, why she goes to drama every Saturday? Thank you. Uh, why I, uh, I, uh, I like drama is because of I'm getting treatment, my, my therapy treatment through drama. Because for what we've been through, we was tortured, trauma. So when we came here, we are like, like my colleagues say, we lost our hope, we lost our confidence, we lost everything. But through drama, we are getting treatment and we are, we are on our way to be fine. So I am so happy to be in that group because uh, after a long week working with the children, Saturday we come along without children, they are paying our child care, they are paying everything. So that one is our platform, is our space to talk, to express ourselves, to feel better. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. And can I just invite one more person, who's Olivia, who just joined the drama group very recently. So maybe she can say what she found when she joined. Hello. Thank you, everyone. Um, I think I've... Uh, June. Um, I've just joined, I've been in the, I've just, I joined the Women Refugee Women in February, but I joined the drama group in uh, June after the retreat. <laughs> um, it's been amazing, guys. Um, this is a place where you, when you join the drama group, there's a lot where you just have a way of expressing yourself and then you come out and you are with people of the same uh, problems but you express your problems in drama and you just feel relaxed and go home when you are saying that no, there's hope for tomorrow. And um, I've got a chance that uh, if you can't, you're not able to talk about, uh, w work out how you have to run your asylum journey, it can all be done through the drama, which is very encouraging. And of course, to me, I like it because at the end of the day, I'm so, so, um, I'm looking ahead. I know that one day I might be the next MP for one of the areas around. So <laughs> this is, yeah, it can happen. Why not? It can, yeah. So I'm really saying that there's a lot I've got from this group and whoever's helping, Thank you so much for everything. Thank you. Thanks so much, guys, for sharing your stories. Uh, I just wondered if there are any questions um, about our work or about the, the asylum process and what women go through. Any questions from anybody at all? Do the children have some kind of a group as well uh, in terms of drama or yeah. puppetry or something? Thanks so much. That's such a great question. The women that come to the drama group, we actually pay for them to have childcare separately. But Rebecca, <laughs> who's over there, um, also runs um, a mums and 
children's group on a, a, a Monday morning um, for us. So, Rebecca, do you want to say anything about why that, that's quite a recent group and it's going really, really well because we love talking about it. <laughs> yes, it's, a, it's, a, so it's ostensibly an English class, but it's very much a conversational and um, dialogical English class in that we have a lot of very small people in the room. So we use um, art, drama, creative methods, singing games together, you know, singing songs together. We're, at the moment, we're making an ABC collage, and then I have um, there's two wonderful volunteers who help. There is a segment of the um, class where we do some English work, English language work with the women, but also it's for the toddlers to feel involved. And you're absolutely right, you know, for those children to really have art and creativity and drama right from, you know, the 18 months old. In fact, we have a four month, four week old baby in the class at the moment. Yeah. So, you know, so from the word go, those children are really singing, be, being in a creative environment, which is very important to me. I mean, that's why the, I do the work I do. And I hope it's important for the women that we work with, too. Yeah, so, so um, we really love the mums and kids group. So thank you for mentioning it, because I do think or well, any of us that have, have been, you know, it's so you can imagine coming to a new city and you don't have your family around you. All the women we work with are living in extreme poverty, many of them completely destitute and homeless. So it's just so hard for mums in that kind of situation. I just think, you know, it's a real haven, the, the mums and kids group. Um, any other questions at all about what we do or why we do it or how, if you'd like to get involved yeah Um, so we've br brought the drama group and um, these poems that you've heard to various events. Some of them quite, you know, small and intimate events, some of them larger. So in fact, that set her free poem that, that was performed. If any of you are on the Women's March on London, you would have heard it in Trafalgar Square being performed to 80,000 people. So it can be really small, really large. There's a, there's a little bit of work on YouTube and we'd like to develop more of that because obviously it's quite a lot to perform live. And it's something, obviously, that in a way we'd, we'd love for, for you guys to be doing it every week. But also you do need your space to be developing your poems and just coming together. So we're sort of trying to find creative ways all the time to connect to new audiences. But if you're interested any, you know, in events in your local community, just get in touch. Anything else you'd like to add? Rebecca, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, every Saturday, the Southbank Centre very kindly um, um, provides studio space for our now two drama groups, um, one till five every Saturday. And we recently collaborated on a project with them, a singing project, listening to songs from women in detention and um, in Yarlswood. And then our drama group responded with their own songs and we went backwards and forwards with those, between those two groups of women. Uh, and then our women in the London drama group, um, they were songs that, that grew from that dialogue and then we performed those songs uh, on the 24th of June at Southbank. Uh, so that was a wonderful opportunity. And we also were filmed, some of the women, was it eight? Was it eight women in the end, I think, were filmed? Joy, I think so. Eight women were filmed, and those women's films were in the Southbank Centre for two weeks um, as an installation, as a film installation. Um, so, and it's wonderful when we can um, collaborate with different arts organisations, because you're absolutely right, it's all about getting those stories and those voices heard in as wider wider sphere as we can so thank you so much can we take any more questions yes Jared. Um, i think there are two things that we'd want to do one is to find a real home a real space like this that could be a really good base for women, for refugee women, for, for refugee women to be able to gather. This is a difficult city, you know, to find a home in sometimes, I think. And so it's partly about a space. We're very glad to be here today, but this is a temporary structure. <laughs> um, but it would be wonderful to have more of a space. Also, we'd like to develop work in other cities. We are doing that, partnering with other similar grassroots groups in other cities, particularly at the moment it's in Manchester, Birmingham, Coventry, starting a, a partnership in Wakefield. 
because of course most of the women that come to the UK to seek asylum, they're not housed in London, they're sent to other cities. And there's amazing work going on in other cities and I just think it needs a bit more resourcing at the grassroots so that we can do this more of this kind of community exchange because it's all about building solidarity and women speaking to women in the communities and I think there's a great, great need for that, you know, in, in other cities as well. So, yeah, a, a, a home and a network is what we'd love. Thank you, Geraldine. I think we, we should probably um, think about wrapping up, but, you know, we'll be probably here for a bit longer, so if anybody's got any more questions or thoughts, we'd love to hear from you. I really just wanted to say a huge thank you to the, to the Serpentine for inviting us here today. It's really lovely to be here in this beautiful park. And a massive thank you to Mazimas for co-hosting, for doing this wonderful food. And we hope to do more work with you in the future. And thank you above all to all the women who shared your stories. Thank you, thank you guys. <laughs>